Hello everybody, welcome, this is Al over at Game Dev HQ. Today is a day we're going to focus on apartments. Um, had a friend on Discord, had an issue setting up and lighting an apartment, and um, figured why not, you know, instead of spending all that time talking online about it, let's, uh, let's knock one out in Unity. So, a uh, couple tools that I was going to use. Of course, I was going to try to possibly get some, you know, uh, typical standard um, apartment layouts. It's something simple. You know, we're, we're not going to go crazy here. But really, the idea is, is let's get to the point where we can start filling this in with some lighting here. Um, so what am I going to be using? Of course, I'm going to be using Filebase. I'm also going to be possibly using a plugin um, that... Uh, I usually use called the object placement tool, which is something you can get on the Unity Asset Store. It's it's a nice plugin when you want to just drop a whole bunch of things in it, like rocks or all that other stuff. Um, and then also I'm going to do a, uh, a, a replace with prefab that we have on our file base uh, library. So everything, of course, we're going to be using off of our file base library. You can get that off of GameDevHQ.com with the pro membership. Um, in here, I'm going to start off with office walls. So if we do a um, office, uh, I'm going to be starting with office walls 04. And I'm going to be starting with uh, laying in a bunch of these floors into our scene. So I figure we'll start with just the living room and nothing too complicated. All we're simply going to do is um, grab and drag and place our floors into our scene. I want to make sure that in my rendering tab, um, why is that so big? I don't know. Let's shrink this down. Oh my goodness, come on. In my lighting tab, where are you? Right here. Okay. Uh, in my lighting tab, I make sure auto generate is turned on. Let me close that tab. So that way it's always lit. Um, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You got to use what you got, man. Um, so then what we do is just simply go ahead and grab some walls. I've got the. Um, the f uh, four millimeter wall and let's see we'll take this drop this here and here and as far as a layout let's see if those look good eee, eee, oh, they look very wallish they look very um uh, what you call it um office like but I do have other office walls too. So let's take a look at this office wall. That one looks a little bit better. And let's take a look at this one. Yeah, let, let's take a look at office wall, this one. Maybe this will match. Yeah, I think this one will do better. Um, which is the beauty of having file base is that, you know, it, once you have a membership, you download as many things as you want. So I can mix and match between walls without any fear. Ah, Peggy's here. How's it going? Um, so, yeah, just uh, going to start dragging together items. Um, one of our members recommended I should start using uh, ProGrids, uh, uh, ProBuilder. And I was checking it out. It looks pretty neat. Um, I don't know if I'm completely ready to make that switch, but it definitely looks like it's very promising. Uh, so we're going to just take these two walls, duplicate this, move it over to this side, rotate it around. And what I am I'm just doing is I want to get a base layout of my environment. So I'm assuming this is going to be my living room area and then um, I'll probably have a couch over here or something I'm st it's still up in the air but there's also going to be kind of the dining room area and the dining room uh, let's see dining room will probably have uh, more of a tiled floor type of environment and if I were to just use this temporarily, it probably would sit kind of like this. 
So then we'd have the rest of our wall moving over. This would be the kitchen kind of area over here. It's not a huge apartment. We're not talking, you know, Manhattan Skyrise or anything like that. And I'm going to just simply place these over here. And so this would be kind of like the kitchen area-ish. And then here's the living room area. And um, then I would imagine that we would have a bedroom, let's say right here. So we'll have a doorway in this area. So which one is this? Office wall four. Uh, so just so you guys know, my boys are home from uh, school because of COVID down here in the U.S. So they may be walking in on us on occasion. Um, <laughs> they're going to be learning from home. Nothing I could do about it. Uh, hopefully the distractions won't be intensely crazy, but um, um, it's it's going to happen. And uh, it just we kind of got a deal, but. Uh, I, I think they'll be fine. They are uh, streaming just like we are um, on their computers to try to um, uh, stay active and, and 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 entertained at school. So I mean, you know, everyone's kind of doing it right now. It's it's tough. Um, so with these floors right here, um, I have a exploded one right there, and this one is the same as these other ones. But the beauty about it is since it's exploded, I can go into these floors and select a couple of these and and basically uncheck them. So I get a, a skinnier floor that would be used as something like a, like a hallway. So I'm going to go ahead and take um, this floor right here and duplicate this over here. That's going to match this hallway. I think I'm a little off on my grid. And so that's going to connect together and we still got to fill in the room over on this side. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this, rotate it around, place this over here. So we got this tiny little hallway. I'm assuming this is probably going to be our bathroom right there. Um, again, we're, we're not talking massive Manhattan home. Um, we're just talking something pretty simple. And let me go ahead and grab this wall. Now, I hold control during these level builds a lot. And that allows me to snap in segments uh, versus like um, uh, uh, massive uh, point jumps or, or, or float values, um, which helps. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this wall. I'm just going to move it down. So we have our wall over here, and then this is kind of the other side of the wall, right? And then I'm going to just grab this wall, duplicate it, rotate it around, and now we have the two sides of the wall. Let's see. Yep. Right here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and give that some some distance basically when designing these the idea is you don't want this gap right here you want this stuff to connect so um, if you have to hold B for Victor and kind of push it in to connect the two um, and then you can adjust your 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 gaps here so I have no issues with my gap there um, let's see we may end up just dropping a column onto here to hide that because um, that's just it's so small and so insignificant that we'd spend a lot of time working on that um, so I'm just going to drop this right over here uh, we got this hallway that extends out oh and uh, we need to explode this wall so we have a wall that's exploded as well somewhere to meter there we go 
And um, I'm going to go ahead and drag this over. Press F to focus. And we'll connect these two together. Um, and did I grab the right wall? Oh, I grabbed the wrong wall. Uh, that is fine. I am going to select this wall. I am going to go to Tool, Replace with Prefab. And I think it's wall two that I'm using. So I'm going to drag this one up here and hit Replace. And boom. All right, that's fixed. Kind of a neat little tool. You could find that on our file base uh, right now if you want to, to use it. Um, okay. So now I'm going to go and get to my doorway. So let's take a look. This is the door entry that I want to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that over here. Uh, we are, let's see, the question from Jason is, are we baking cake? Eh, we're, you know, we're going to build an apartment very quickly. And then we are going to do some baking and lighting um and we're gonna try to do it before i get supremely interrupted uh by the fact that my kids are being home uh, not homeschooled but they're doing online learning so um there will be interruptions and there will be challenges but hopefully we can kind of push through this and uh um you know create something pretty quickly together and so um I was talking to somebody the other day about level design and they mentioned how isn't there a faster way to do this and I'm sure there is um, somewhere I don't know of a faster way to build out levels though with a lot of control I mean beyond the the idea of you know uh, templatizing every single room um, I, I, I just don't know if there's just a, a quick um, and fast way of doing it. I'm wondering, are these walls different? I think so. I think these walls are different than these ones right here. So I'm going to go back to tools, replace. Where's this four meter wall? Yep, that is true. Do, 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 do. This one I will replace with that. This one, replace. And I think this one needs to be replaced. Yep. And this door right here is... I could totally change the material, Peggy. You are 100% correct. Um, I'm finding that this tool is a little faster, though. Um, so this one right here is wall four. Oh, we just did a crash. That's why it was so fast. Close. Well, let's try that again. <laughs> you know that's going to happen. It always happens. Oh, seriously. <laughs> oh, seriously. Uh, oh, I have to do that all over again. No. All right, let's go fast. <laughs> that sucks. Save and save often. I, I did not save often. Well, it happens. It's no fun. It happens, though. Good thing we didn't get all the way done. And then it crashed. We just got really close. Um, okay, so just to save time, I'm going to select all these elements, duplicate these, and move them over. All right. Uh, bedroom one. We got our hallway right here. Um... Eh, well, eh, it happens. 
<laughs> There's no problem with wrong waltz anymore. You're 100% on that. <laughs> uh, silver lining, right? Uh, to every cloud. How are you guys doing anyway? What is new in your worlds? While I quickly knock this out. Let's see. I'm just going to make this... Kill that. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's duplicate this. I'll move that over. And then I need to get uh, the floor. So file base, three D environments, urban. Uh, I believe this is floor. Dad, is this you? Um, that is beautiful, son. Good job. It's my homework. Really? Yeah. Okay. When I'm writing down everything that he is, he's playful and cute. Aww. So my son is doing a project, and the project has to do with our puppy. No, with our pet. Our pet, yes. You got to touch a spacecraft earlier? Ooh, that's that's really neat. <laughs> There's a lot of zip ties in space. Really? That's awesome, Blake. Uh, is it for a job or is it just for an experience? How do we spell brown? Yeah. B R. B R. O W. O W. N. Are you a ghost now, Evan? Uh, let's see. Why URP have not ambient occlusion in post-processing? Um, easy answer. It's because it's URP. It's not meant to have ambient occlusion. It's one of the things that they say they're going to build. But that won't happen for quite some time. Because um, it's ambient occlusion is an expensive post-processing effect. And... Those were meant to be really lightweight processes. So that's why it's not readily available. It's in the um, it's in the roadmap, but it's not there yet. What do you think, Evan? Do you like it? Are you a ghost? I think I'm pretty much back to where I was, except for the doors that enter in through here. Uh, let's see. Doing scans to get them into Unity. Oh, 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 oh. So, I forgot, I didn't mention. So I think I might actually have a pretty decent um, guy who does um, characters. So hopefully we will be able to start churning that out. My name is Venus. Yeah, that's perfect, son. Um, you have kids. Yes, I have two of them. And 
I don't, I don't know if you guys are experiencing this, but um, because of COVID-19, our entire state is basically shut down. And so my kids are now at home with me while um, this is occurring. And uh, this will probably last for the next six months. For one year. Only lasts for one year? It's a long year, buddy. But, you know, we got to get through COVID, so. COVID's awful, isn't it, Evan? Yeah. Yeah. It is what we need to do. You don't want to get sick, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Can you actually get a roof? Can I get a roof on this? Yes, of course. Do I have the roof off? What? What? Okay, so we got our doorway right there. So we'll select these two. Duplicate that. Put that over here. Uh, do a quick save, and this will be where we put the bathroom um, in a little bit. What, what are you making? I am making a apartment. Hey, don't you have some books you have to read? And you got to take that upstairs. Okay? Come on, buddy. Ah, children. Love them. Okay, I'm going to call this. So, um, right now, what I am simply doing is just laying out floors. A floor plan idea of, of what my layout for my apartment's going to be. Um, uh, let's see. That probably shouldn't have been a wall door. I probably wanted a two-meter wall. So, where are you? You're right here. So I'm going to take you, drag you over here, press F, and we're just going to set that right here. So this will be our restroom. This is our main entrance. Here's our bedroom. Here's our uh, living room area, et cetera, et cetera. This will be where the kitchen goes and uh, um, uh, kind of going through there uh let's see let me go to run through this real quick brushing up on particle systems and stuff like that nice peggy i like that how would i like to go say illumination settings for this most important to get the realism uh aloha i actually got to catch a stream <laughs> yes you did da, 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 inspector gadget da, 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 da. um new research got the touch of spacecraft it's not out there post processing when creating module ashes i need to make sure you won't be visible scene between different parts i mean how do you uh v is in victor for vector snapping i will show that to you joni um yeah i won't forget to save i wish i thought there should be an auto save here um yeah too many cases in 2021 <laughs> uh someone tested positive right next door to the high school i think everyone here is remote too my daughter has to go into college mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um we are uh, fortunately in a state that our governor is extremely strict about covid uh she was on the team that was in charge of covid um when or not covid uh sars so when we got one case in our city uh she immediately shut the whole city down and she was not messing around this was absolutely essential to her to make sure that none of this got crazy um which I, I applaud her for. I mean, in the end, the economy is, is important. But once the cure comes out, they're going to look at one thing, is, is what states had the highest death rate? And why did they need it to die if the virus was only, or the, the vaccine was only a few months away? You know, 
And so uh, everyone's got to kind of suck it up for a little while. But we will all get through this. And, um, you know, I, there's also some benefits. Like, dang, my kids are getting really good at computers right now. Um, it's pretty impressive. So <sighs> you got to look at the bright side, too, on certain things. And, and it's, it's hard sometimes to see it. But I, I would so much rather the family be safe and healthy than, than and deal with a little bit of distraction at home during the weekday than I would... Um, to ever know that uh, they got sick because of me or I got sick because of them yeah, screw that I don't want to get sick uh, so <laughs> well, let's be honest here um, dee -dee 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 -dee. so I'm just going to lay in some floor tiles I'm gonna go to this kind of flat perspective and let's start duplicating away. And we may come back and swap out textures or whatnot, but it's a good start. And I need one more right there. Okay. And I need to create an empty, call this ceiling. All right. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we have the basis for our rooms. Good to see you too, Rhett. Um, uh, Rhett, let's see, I have to work at home and help with teaching online. Yeah, yeah, yeah same with my wife. My wife's a teacher. Um, man, uh, I, you know, when and they were saying, oh, you, you're going to have to go back to school. I told her, you know, if you need to quit your job, quit your job. But, um, you know, uh, your health is so much more important to me than than your salary this year. Take a year off then. I And um, what was it? This in, in our valley, even without kids the first week back there were like 20 teachers who ended up getting corona and the only people allowed in the schools are teachers imagine if the kids were actually there it just it's it's sad and uh um but you know the kids are stronger enough they won't get sick but man i mean it's just it's such a contagious disease so contagious that's what's that's what's really terrifying about it is it's how uh, contagious it is um we have doors yes we have lots of doors that we can use um for this so let's see what doors we want to use for our apartment uh i don't want anything too complex um it's probably more doors like this 29s 34s I think those are the doors that I'd probably stick with right now so let me go ahead and grab oh let's see yeah I think those either will work or let's see 29 to 36 these are more like doors meant for a um, a buildings these ones are as well I mean these white ones look pretty good I may be able to just use those yeah let's go with those all right let's just go ahead and hit download and these go in pretty quickly uh, I think it's the worst pandemic in the 2000s uh, that reminds me I have to find some time to do some code examples for stream Sunday so much for an uh, infallible uh, my job was hard set against um, <laughs> uh, telecommunicating, but they're seeing the benefit now. Isn't it crazy, like, how much work you can get done without actually being at work? It's it's pretty impressive. Um, okay, so these are the clean textures. I want door number 45. That's the one I want right there. Um ch -ch 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 -ch. Easy enough. 
and uh, uh, I've been getting more into 3D modeling side of things, but my degree is going into software engineering, um, which I am less fond of. Uh, you know what? Life is long, my friend. Um, it, people are living longer. People are having multiple careers in their lifetime. So, I mean, if you ever decide to switch out, um, the door, uh, no pun intended, is always open. Uh, to, to change careers. Uh, I wouldn't get too worried about that. Uh, but my university has always been mostly online, so not much has changed. Um, real fake door. <laughs> um, no, these are these are legit, man. Turn off the center, pivot. Hey, we can open it right up. Peace. Uh, so, let's see. Okay. Um... What, what is file base great for? Stuff! Stuff! Alright, uh, we need stuff. We need... Let's start with chairs. Let's fill this, this living room in. Okay, so I need chairs. I need couches. That's what I need. Like, big, fluffy couches. No migs. Just couches. Uh, okay. Lots to choose from here. Um, I'm gonna go with couch 01. Let's go ahead and download that in. And locate. Um, yeah, uh, uh, let's see. Someone's mentioning how they are. The doors are easy, man. Uh, simply just slick the doors, add them in. Um, they have the frame already pre built around them. So. Um, and all you need to do is make sure that you you set your 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 movement point to pivot and the frame uh, Covers the hole so don't have to worry about that. It's all kind of like a, uh, a nice little uh, Sexy solution right there um, So I'm gonna go ahead and locate And just gonna go to FBX drop this in okay, so we're gonna start with our first few couches Let's see um, I'm going to set this against the wall over here. It uh, looks like they have another wall over here. And we could pull in another set of couches to to make it look a little different. But I'll set this couch. And, and we'll have to work with windows over here. Um, let's see. Is FileBase like Sketchfab? Uh, I think so. But Sketchfab is, I believe, a la carte. But a lot of it's free. Uh, FileBase is not a la carte. You just download whatever you want. Um, we add new stuff up every single week. So, you know, it's kind of... Um, it, it, it that that's really the main difference is is you can add a ton of stuff in our from our library into here very quickly um let's see i saw this nice little column kind of thing over here so i want to add that i would say it's more like this pillar so let's go ahead and add a corner pillar Actually, I want this to be a full pillar, so... Or at least a half. Oh, here we go. Nice little corner pillar. There we go. Press F. Oh, I picked the wrong side. Um, did you do all your assignments, sweetheart? Um, do you need me to check? Okay. Okay. Wait, I have one thing to have to do. Okay. Boom. All right. And I like to kind of push these columns into the side of the wall a little bit. Um, so it kind of recesses out, which is nice. That gives it a little bit of uh, oomph. Um, do, 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 do. I'm wondering if this room may be even a little bit too big. 
because usually um, apartments don't get this big. Usually they're a little bit smaller. You can see kind of by this image, but eh, you know, we got some space here, so we'll leave it big. Let's move this around. That way our character doesn't like clip into the walls or anything like that. Uh, let's see, son. We do gotta do a quick review of the child's activities. Inbox. Notifications. Um, let's see. Did you do this one, Trevor? Yeah. Okay. You gotta get going with this one. Uh, okay, let me read it to you. Let me read it to you real quick. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. Okay. The answer is... Do you know what empathy is? What? Empathy is understanding how somebody else's, else feels. Okay. So if someone else is hurt, you shouldn't laugh. I know. You should feel sad. I know. That's what empathy is. It's yeah. feeling other people's pain if they're, they're sad. So, um, that's what, that's today's question. And actually, this is a little more complicated, so we'll, we'll deal with that when, um, we get a chance. Did you do this one right here? The jam board? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Did you do this one right here? Yeah. This one right here? Okay. Um, this one is oh, we should work on this together. Here, we'll work on this one together. Uh, how about you and your brother go upstairs and how about you guys read some books together? Okay, until 10.15 when class starts up again. Why do you want the job? <laughs> uh, man, I, I, I want to sit with them and show them this, but um, you guys will hate me for it. So, And I don't think their work is going to be that easy. Um, we're going to have to sit down and really work on it together. Um, okay, so that image right here, we have the corner we need a coffee table right so let's look for a table that could be used as a coffee table craps tables blackjack tables classroom assets ah look at that um nice little coffee table right there okay so let's go ahead and import that and you know since we already got this couch we can actually replace one of these couches maybe with um that table which would be pretty cool so import that in um let's see oh uh andrich but uh fake wall thickness um let's see yeah you know it's um so you got the two sides of the wall right and you can kind of see the um the clipping or you could see how um the occlusion from one wall to the other and right now i'm just using control to do the you moving the units by point i think it's like 0.5 or 0.1 of a unit is what it's moving it by um and then this this whole door thing kind of sits in between it um it, it's just you know we've done these enough to where we know where they kind of sit and just drop them in uh, let's see, we want to hide this. I'm going to draw in my table. So, you know, we'll have our coffee table right there. I have this red sofa that I could drop in. Um, do that. I think this thing is a little small so you know we'll bring it up just a little bit uh we need so this is gonna be a very ugly cozy um room 
So we have a coffee table. We need our TV. And yeah, I still think this room is maybe a little bit too big. And because it's too big, it's, um, it's, it, it looks wrong scale wise. So what I may do is take these floors. Uh, oh, actually, I may just decrease these. Save that, and then I'll grab all this stuff. And I'll just move it down. Oops. And I can keep that or I could delete that. There we go. That feels a little bit better. Um, I'll have to swap this door out with a, um, a single door, which I do have. Uh, where is this? Office walls, door two, I believe. That's it right there. Easy enough. Okay, so that feels better. Now this doesn't feel so cavernous, I would say. Um... And actually, I'll take this thing right here, duplicate it, move it around, and position, delete, F. Oh, puppy, what's going on? Shh, puppy. No, oh, no, no, you're not scary. You're not scary. Now. Puppy. Ay, ay, ay. Um, okay. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Sebastian, uh, yeah, I'm, well, I was about to get to the kitchens and the bathrooms pretty soon, so, uh, you know, if you, if you want to just hold on a bit, you can, you know, wait and see, or you can kind of go about it on your own, it's, it's all you, my friend, um, but, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this table, and uh, let's see, floor, walls, ceiling. I want to make sure that all this stuff, like these corner walls, I want to keep these into the wall area. I don't want these sitting out in my dynamic area. Uh, I'm going to drop this table and set it right around the corner over here. This is where um, we go to escape the... Um, that's the the frustrations of the world let's go ahead and grab a TV so um, uh, let's do is this a flat one or is this a curved one that's a flat one that's perfect I'll download that <laughs> my dog just scared your rabbits <laughs> I'm sorry um just import that in, uh, locate, move this over to the side, FBX will drop in a modern TV, where are you at, you're right there. Let's see. Yeah, I so I've got some exciting stuff coming in for for Filebase in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, tanks got them built finally, ready to go. Um, trucks, vehicles, cars, sports cars, um, semi trucks. Um, I have some monsters finally getting created. I have some 
female characters finally getting created. I have, um, I got a whole bunch of cool stuff finally getting created uh, that should be up soon, sooner than later. Uh, let's see. Let's get some greenery in here. Uh, we do have plants. Let's see. Which one should we use? We have a couple to choose from. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, I'm going to need some side tables. If I type inside, here we go. Um, actually, you know, these look so old and raggedy. Um, I'm curious if these will look better. Yeah, I got all this stuff coming in. Mechs. Holy crap. I got a whole bunch of mechs coming in. Um, have you guys ever heard of Greeble? Do you know what Greeble is? Um, I'll, I'll, the star goes to the first person who, who replies and knows what Greeble is. Without Googling it either. Like, don't cheat. <laughs> the answer is nope. Is that from Dota characters? No, it's not. Okay. Nice try, though. Nobody knows what Greeble is? Okay. Um, Greeble is like miscellaneous tech crap and it's um uh, it's commonly found on star destroyers so um that's what greeble looks like right here this stuff so we're gonna get a whole bunch of that stuff right there so uh, when you're building your guns, when you're building your steampunk environments, when you're building your buildings, when you're building your your things that um, uh, are meant to look really sophisticated and technical, instead of making so many different game objects so customized, now it's like you're going to get um, packs like this. And you're just going to literally take it, import it in, and drop it on top of whatever objects you have. So, you know, like a fine example is we have we have spaceships, right? Um, what is it? Uh, oh, actually, here, I'll go delete this. Uh, vehicles, uh, space. Got 30 spaceships here, right? Someone says, you know, I, I like Space Fighter number five, but I want more detail in it. I want, like, um, pipes and, and all this other stuff hanging off of it, yada, yada, yada. You get those Greevils, which, what, how we're building it, um, which normally it's a displacement map. What you would do is you'd have a plane and you'd have this, like, tech, stuff all over it and you hit render and it causes the displacement map causes the uh does like a, a sub uh a sub polygonal displacement and it creates these like amazing details with ours they're going to be basic shape greebles and all the detail is going to be in the normals and it's all going to be in the uh um uh what you call it um uh, it's all going to be in the, uh, the, the, the the bump channels and the normals. So, you know, you're going to have all those details that you can now throw onto objects, which are going to look extremely good. You guys are going to love it. Um, very excited about that. I That's one of those things where I, I've really wanted to have that for a while. And it's, it's exciting to actually see that come about. So um, 
Yeah, we've got so many cool things coming into Filebase right now. Uh, now, are they up yet? Uh, not yet. Um, I got... I have to take them in, and I gotta process them first. And sometimes that takes a little longer than expected, I'm not gonna lie. But I have been getting a lot more help lately, so... Um, you know, that, that's, that's benefited me uh, greatly. So... Um, we will it will be up soon uh, don't 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 get too worried but um, it's it will be up soon let's see so I want to go back to my apartment and we were looking at plants I need to add some more plants here um, plants and lights I don't have any lights so what do we have as far as lights go? Interior lights. I'm looking for like lamps. I thought I uploaded some. Mm, I have them. I thought I uploaded them. Uh, right now, we are just using the standard pipeline. We are not really diving into any specific pipeline yet. We're just kind of building this environment out, Cursed Toast. Um, let's see. Do I have a girlfriend? I am married with two children. It's fun times. Uh, let's see. D -d 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 I know I have a whole set of lights. I don't know where they went. But they're like uh, standing lights. I, you know, I may have already have them prepped and ready. I just haven't put them up on file base. So I'll get that up. Um, let's see. All right, next thing I need to do is plants. Uh, let's get some some plants in here. Interior plant. Let's download that. I am doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? Um, how are you doing, Exile? Uh, no, today is just a kind of a simple day. Um, uh, Cursed actually requested because he was he was emailing me and he's like, dude, you know, I, I'm curious about the lighting. He was having some issues on his own, and at some point he felt bad for using my time, which I'm like, shut up, stop. Um, but then I told him, you know, why don't we just do a live stream about some lighting um, in Unity? Because what I like using these moments for is to build out environments for the uh, discovering file base. And so I figure, you know, let's just, let's kill two birds with one stone here and let's let's do them both. And so um, this is good. And you know what I also love doing is this allows me to test out um, my assets and it allows me the opportunity to say, oh, you know what? I need to build X, Y, and Z. I don't have X, Y, and Z. And you never know what you're missing until you're actually working on it. And you're like, oh, this could be so much more useful if I had this. Um, or, you know, this asset is completely scaled wrong or, or whatnot. I need to, to, to fix these sorts of things. So, you know, this is a great experiment. Um, for me um yeah okay you search for lamps travis right i thought i had lamps but and then i probably will need to take a note to fix the search terms to make that easier to discover oops let's go ahead and save before i crash again all right so we get a little green right around here Good, good, good. 
We'll worry about the windows in just a second. Um, okay, it would be good probably for us to add a sort of column right here to break up this area and this area. And we'll use this as kind of like our little makeshift dining room. And this will be more of our kitchen. So let's start look for kitchen. All right. Um, let's see. I know we have these kitchen assets right here. Hey, sweetheart, what's up? Bored? Do you know where my computer is? Do I know where your computer is? I really don't. Did you check upstairs? Did you check downstairs? Okay, let's get started with that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let me go ahead and add to the end table with the lamp. Uh, da, 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 da. Don't forget a fireplace. Oh, we have a fireplace, too. Okay, so let's go ahead and locate these assets. Uh, we have some kitchen assets right here. Uh, adjustable shelves. We have that whole section. This, this. Wall mounted cabinets. Uh, kitchen counters. Alright, so. What I'm going to do is take our kitchen counters, rotate it, press F. Um, doop ba doop ba doo. This will be our kitchen countertop over there. Um, let's see, do I have single counters? Let me get some wall mounted ones over here. I will, I think I have a hanging microwave. So let's double check that. Do, 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 do. Let's see. I got the regular microwave. Do I have hanging ones? I think that's a regular microwave too. So I don't have hanging microwaves. So we're going to have to add that to a list. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Hanging microwave. Okay, so I got that. Now I'm gonna take this um, countertop. Fifty Shades of Al. <laughs> oh man, that is wrong. It'd be fun to play, don't get me wrong, but I mean, it's just wrong. All right, so I'm gonna stick that right there. And then we do need to, and I'm seeing some issues right here. Like I don't have, uh, we need to do some kitchen work. Uh, kitchen counter top fixes. Because you know, you see that, that wall, that connection right here. That's not good. Um, I mean, I could push this down to kind of hide it. But realistically, we should have... Um, assets that can kind of help cover that up because that that's never good right there um let's see I need a dishwasher okay all right I got three to choose from let's do this that's actually a ghost is that right, son? Yeah, I can shoot flames. Really? They actually burn his fist once he touches them. Is that right? Since they're on fire. No and way. Guess what? What? He's actually not the strongest. Is that He's right? actually the weakest. No way. You know why? Why? He's actually pretty hard. Yeah? Yeah. No way. All right. 
that's um that, that that's how you talk to your children 101 right there um So, yeah, I will need to eventually fix this, but this is my temporary fix for right now. And then over here, I need a dishwasher, so... That will go right there as a temporary, but I'm going to put notes, uh, kitchen, countertop. We need to get all the different options available for that so that uh, um, that could work for us. And if I am not mistaken, I don't have a kitchen sink either, so that's important to get. Well, I have this one, but I need kitchen sinks. Good to know. Hanging microwave. Good to know. Um, but what I may do is um, grab hmm, do I want this oven? That's got a, a light. That's kind of useless. This one's got a water cooler, microwave, toaster, coffee machine. And I think this one is a better one. So let's go ahead and grab this. I also need to get a fridge. <clears throat> oh, and the overhead. I don't know what that thing is on overhead. Yeah, <laughs> not in file base. Has everything but the kitchen sink. Oh, the puns. I love it. Uh, assets by myself. Uh, no. I have a team of four artists who work on these assets. So um, I have Thiago, Amir, Ahmed, and... Thiago, Amir, Ahmed... And, oh my gosh, why is his name escaping me? Um, it is... Dilla. So, I got four people who work with me. All right. Now, uh, we definitely... I, I couldn't put together all of this on my own that that would be an insane task to to try to pull together um way too much work so coffee machine i generally stick my coffee machine right at the corner um we got a microwave so let's go ahead and pull that we will leave that in the corner right over here and we'll leave it a little angular for a little more life. Let's make it a little bigger because it's one of those big microwaves. Um, a toaster, of course. We want a toaster in our kitchen. Let's go ahead and drag that and set that over here. Oh, we need dish racks, don't we? Filled with plates because that would be a cool item, right? Um, so dish rack with plates. I, I am not the 3D artist, Superman. Now, John has definitely uh, convinced you guys that I am far better than I actually am. But that's what that's what partners do. That's what buddies do. You know, we hype up each other. We're like CG wingmen. Yes, there are, Travis. Yes, there are. Okay. 
Uh, there are, um, yeah, I just have this one side table lamp. But I have some nice lights that I had created. But I'll double verify, or verify that. Um, all right, lights, standing, tables, yes. Um, yes, we will add the light switches in just a little bit. Okay, um, I need a fridge. Okay, uh, let's go with, uh, let's get something that's decent. All right, let's, let's do this one. Now, with these, these fridges, uh, <laughs> these fridges are nice because... They actually have interiors inside of these as well. Puppy, shh, 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 shh. Um, which is is very pleasing to have. So I'm just gonna zoom in, push this over to the side. You know, it's nice to be able to open this thing up and actually have. Um, all this other stuff inside of it, so you, you can load it up with food if you want or whatnot. Um, but it's extremely helpful to have that there. Um, so we got that. What else do we need here? Let me double check. This is not cutting in. Um, so we got this kind of stuff. I want to do more household stuff, so how? Um, oh, good. We have some more fun kitchen assets. All right. <clears throat> yeah. If you... Uh, uh, Exile says, um, you know, it would be cool if you put food like in Resident Evil 7. I'm, I'm thinking... It, if you call that food, it, that's awesome. But that wasn't food. That was that was something beyond disgusting, right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could totally stock that whole thing up with with all types of goodies. Um, so let's reset this. I'm gonna set this in static. I like separating the statics from the dynamic objects. And, and what do I mean by dynamic objects? It's the objects that. Um, can move but also it's more the objects that um uh, do we have steak let's see yes we have steaks lots of them um food uh we have condiments vegetables food sets so we got some bread some salads some pizzas some pies some s stuff like that steaks we will add more um but uh, yeah, yeah, we're starting to load up on that stuff. So uh, this could use a range as well, if we're being honest here. So I'd have to cut up the... Oh, look at that. We got uh, pans, all that other good stuff. So, yes, we'll have to come back here and revisit this. Um, what did I just import? I imported in... Let's double check. Uh, I imported in these kitchen assets. Okay, so I hit locate. That shows me where these are in this FBX. Uh, clothes hanger. Oh, that's a nice little addition. So let's see where I could put this. Um, probably. Rotate this around. Let's scale it up a little bit. I mean, it doesn't need to be huge. But it's a nice little addition. This is, should be where the sink is, so we'll leave this like where the sink should be. Um, we have some kitchen cupboards. Uh, nice kitchen storage shelves. Stick that on the side, or actually, we can even move this column down just a touch. And we 
can stick a whole bunch of stuff in there. Um, we have a, a kitchen table that we can throw in. Uh, we could set this, I don't know, maybe somewhere over here. You gotta eat somewhere in a dining room, right? Um... So, stick that right there for right now. Uh, let's see. We have a stool. So I'm going to take this stool. I'll just set this somewhere in the kitchen. Um, it's more just to kind of fill space. Uh, for this table, we'd probably need some chairs. So, um, let's see. chair do we have any chairs let's see if we have any chairs here uh hey this works perfect oh we got this one uh, well let's let's do this download bam uh you know what dominic i wanted to do which would be kind of neat is once we get this room kind of set up which i don't know if we're going to get it all set up today i'm going to throw in a first person character controller but then later, I actually want to throw this into the Oculus and walk through it. Um, I think that would be kind of fun. All right. So. This stuff is so easy to do, you know, but in the what? In the Oculus, in, in VR. Let's walk through this in VR, for goodness sakes. Okay, um, and, you know, let's move this plant from over there to maybe... back to our pivot something like that and then this should have a lamp over there which I know I have more lamps but I'm gonna do without and just uh, download this one uh, yeah well I'll do a uh, uh, a character controller first but what's kind of neat in VR is that, you know, you can walk through it still like you would normally, but then you can, like, pick up objects and, like, chuck them around the room once you give them a rigid body, which is kind of neat. Import. Okay. Um, let's see. FBX side table. All right. I want my lamp. Uh, so... Let's break this prefab. Unpack. And I'll take this lamp. Press F. Move it right over here. Just leave that right there. So easy to do. Uh, here, actually, we'll duplicate that. Doop, doop, one, two. Duplicate it. Move it. Over here. Okay, so <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's see what other fun stuff. Okay, here's the crazy thing, guys. Look at this. I have 17 downloads in Filebase so far, out of 1,464. It's not bad. Um, Let's see, what else was there? Oh, range, right? Um, so this, I don't think this is like a ballers type of environment. And... 
throw that in here. So we definitely do have a range. Uh, I'm going to have it just sit right here for right now. And I'll have to... I'll have to come back and separate out all of these um, these cabinets into individual pieces so that we could set them next to each other. So just understand, I am totally cheating this, uh, but the goal is to eventually come back. Because, you know, what, what bums me out is this range is actually, like, full-fledged. You can open it up, and there's, like, stuff inside of it. Um, I mean, we could take this in and break this up into FBX, but... Um, yeah, you know, we'll see. Um, in fact, what this does is this changes things a little bit because now um, this thing should go over here um, unless this is where the range is supposed to go. So, I mean, options, options, options. Uh, let's see. Home. What else? Oh, we need curtains, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, so let's go ahead and download some curtains. Um, let's see. Uh, Alterman, what is Filebase? Filebase is a beautiful system that uh, was kind of created so that we can help build courses, but it's turned into this, like, our own personal asset library where... Um, are we have a team of artists and their whole job is to help us build um, giant libraries of assets that we can use for video games so you know that's what file base is basically and so we got all these assets um, available in our membership and you just sign up for it and it's not like um, sketchfab I think I think it's sketchfab where you, it's like an a la carte um, but I know a lot is free or even the unity asset store. It's, it's more like once you, um, once you purchase it or uh, once you sign up for your membership, um, you can download as much as you want, which is, is really nice. Uh, let's see. So where are these curtains? Curtains. I got uh, the pole, and I got this should have been separated out. Yes, I got one set of curtains here, and I got the other set of curtains here. And so, okay, so I'll leave this here. Once we decide our windows, which I may do like a two windows setup, um, this one curtain set may go right here in front of one window. And then this curtain set right here will go right here for another window. So here's kind of like the idea I have is, um, you know, this column would sit in between um, and these walls would basically disappear, sort of like that. And then uh, we'll get some windows that will go into there, which reminds me, um, walls with windows. And what are those sliding doors? Yeah. sliding doors um which is which would be pretty cool um and yeah this this will look nice all right okay so let's save and save often uh, this is our hallway let's search for home some more Mm -mm -mm -mm. Dining room, curtains, oh, we got bedrooms. Oh, we need a ceiling fan, don't we? Let's go ahead and download that in. Uh, Dominic, yes, you are allowed to use our assets even if you're not a member. So, you know. Um, the, the only problem with, you know, of course, canceling the subscription and, and is that you get to, you miss out on all the new stuff that we add, um, because you're not on there anymore. Uh, the other negative is, um, 
uh, what you call it, uh, um, it, you, you lose out on all the new stuff that we add, but what was, oh, it was just in my head. You lose out on the new stuff, and I guess that's like the biggest issue right there, is you lose out on all the new stuff. And you can't access the old stuff unless you save it into... Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. Um, so basically, file base right here. You know, this, this search capability I'm using? Um, it's gone. So that's what sucks. Is like, you you right now we're using 20 downloads to do this entire scene so far out of 1,464. So let's say you can't save it. All right, no, no worries. Do, do, do you do you. Um, you know, we understand it completely. Um, but let's say you cancel. Now, how are you going to find your assets? You could do what I'm doing right here, which is you can go through each and every one of these. So, you know, let's say you're looking for specifically a microwave. Well, now you got to go through all your electronics to find where the microwave sits because sometimes we bundle them together. So that's where it's like you could. You, you absolutely could. Is it going to make your life harder? I think so. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I do think it, it does make things more challenging. Um, okay, uh, paintings. We need paintings, guys. Um, these walls are barren. They're ugly. So we're just going to download some paintings. Now, these paintings are actually kind of cool because they're set up to be separate materials. So when you want to adjust these to make your own paintings... Um, you can, and you're, you're not just, you're not s set in stone of, oh, I have to do it this way, or I have to do it this way. Um, you have the versatility, uh, to add in what you want, which is nice. Um, so for example, cause that, that's like rambling. That makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so embarrassing. Okay. So like in the painting area right here, I have one, two, three, four, five different types of frames. And you could see the actual painting inside of it. In here, we have the material. Now these materials right here cover all five paintings. So the only thing that changes is this texture, which, uh, here we go. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so here's a flat version of the texture. Um, here's a flat version of this texture, etc., etc. So if you want to swap your picture out with these it's easy to do you know and and now you got the versatility of of slapping a whole bunch of different types of paintings together in one room which is really exciting i, I love that stuff um so let's go ahead and save i'm going to get painting number 12 and let's go ahead and press f and this would probably look good on this wall right over here. Ooh. And uh, then I'm going to take 13, place it under 12. Let's see. So you got these two paintings right here against this wall. We can go ahead and take um, 14. So this is a nice long oblong type of painting. And you know, we'll stick that, let's say, right over here. Um, it's a little big, so we'll bring it down in size. And then uh, 15. Let's just set this right over. which is, you know, kind of what we want. See these nice edges, these nice frames that are sticking out? Very nice, very nice, very nice. Um, and 16. You know, I can set this over here to start filling in this wall.
Um, let's see. So then we need. Um, let's take a look. Coat. I need. Oh, look at these. Uh, coat rack. Let's download a coat rack. Drop that in. <clears throat> All right. Okay, locate. And I think I'm going to be close to finished with building this environment. Um, at least temporarily. Uh, what sexy one should we use? We have a bunch of varieties. Ooh, this is so exotic right here. All right, let's use this one. Um, you could tell that the person who lives in this house is an older individual uh, based on the, the style. It's, it's very... Um, it's not modern. You know, you, you got this type of old-style coat rack. You got these hangers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, th this... The bevels and stuff like that. It's, it's very... Uh, it's definitely not the New Age type of look. Um, what I also am thinking is I'm curious Whoop. if I were to make these like that how would that look I think that would look actually pretty nice and then I'm gonna take these let's make these a little longer All right, all right, all right. And we'll just take both of these and raise them up to, let's say, up here. So now we got the natural sunlight coming in and filling this room up with light. Okay. Um, oh, you know, something that always gets overlooked. Um, Should be switch. Yes, plugs and switches. Don't forget to add these into your scene. Um, these really do provide a lot of detail, and it's something that you know you should definitely uh, try to keep um, in your environment. Let's see. So let me hit a locate. see I think my chat just oh yeah uh, plugs and switches FBX um, so we need to find ah there we go some switches uh, these little things right here I, I know they're not a big deal but you know when you walk around a room that doesn't have any it's obvious at a certain point like oh something is missing right here so you know, it's, it's good to have these little uh, nuances uh, throughout your rooms. Um, you know, and, and these, they come in different varieties, um, which is kind of nice. You know, you, you stick them near your front door, whatnot, so you know when they walk in. things like that I mean you know this is the kind of stuff that in my opinion um, you notice and it also is nice because you get a level of interactivity in these now where you can have your lights turn on and off inside a scene or you can flip a switch and now um, your flan your fan turns on and stuff like that and you know we could do something like that too which is kind of fun um, but okay so we built this room uh, fairly dang quickly I mean we, we just kind of plow through it um, I'm going to create a folder called dynamic and I'm gonna grab all this stuff right here including the painting and drop it into here so I got my statics and I got my dynamics inside my dynamic folder I'm gonna create a new folder uh, oh I didn't change the scale or whatever uh, living room um, I'm gonna drop that into here and I'm gonna make sure I move all this stuff 
into here. Uh, bad practice, I forgot to reset dynamic. I can't do it at this point unless I pull everything out, so just to let you know. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and light this scene uh, very quickly. So, uh, quick question, guys. How do you want to light it? Do you want to do HDRP or do you want to do URP? It's, it's kind of up to you guys. Um, URP is not going to look significantly different than this. Um, I mean, it will look different, but it's not going to be huge. I think HDRP, you're going to get the most bang for your buck. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really your guys' call. I, I'm up for either one. You know, just kind of type it in um, and, and let me know. Uh, uh, Dominic X asks, what's the difference between static and dynamic? Um, yeah, sure. So the, the big difference is between the two. Uh, static objects, when you... A, they're not interactable. So um, if you were in VR and you plan on picking up this this vase right or this this plant, pick it up and throwing it, you can't do that with um, static objects. You can only do that with dynamic objects. Um, the other thing is is that you can have dynamic objects contribute to global illumination, and global illumination is a baking of shadows. So the idea would be baking of light and shadows, but. Um, imagine if you were to have your entire scene and you put on a multiply layer on top of it where all the shadows are. Uh, if you bake your object that's static, when you move your object, it's no longer affected by shadows. So it'll actually leave a shadow mark where it was. Uh, whereas dynamic ones, it will dynamically change. Um, HDRP, HDR, live stream settings, da 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 da. Uh, it looks like HDRP is going to win this. I only see one URP, so let's do HDRP. Okay. Um, so let me bring this down a little bit so I can see all this because there's just a lot here. Um, okay, one of the first things I like to do, and this is just for experience, is I export this package. And I do this because there's a... 99% chance I'm going to break this. Um, living room... What's today's date? The 27th? 7th? 8th? Uh, today is the 7th. Okay. Uh, 0, 8, 27, 20. Okay. Save it out. Um, that way, if we, we, if we break this, um, you know, it, it's not the end of the world. And we don't have to start over. Um... But we shouldn't break it. So the next thing we'll do is we will import in our HDRP package. And then we're going to run the uh, the tool that will help us get it all set up. So if you go to Package Manager, um, which is right here. I'm going to go to High Definition Rendering Pipeline. Um, okay, so in here you can actually choose multiple versions of, of what you want. I've run into issues, specifically in 2019.4 and the HDR pipeline when it comes to the color curves. I'll probably be able to mimic the bug. They know the bug exists. It's there. Um, but you'll probably see it. I'm just going to load in 27.3.1. Now, I, I like to just point out real quickly. You don't have to run the latest version of Unity all the time. Sometimes... It's better to run the most stable version of Unity. Um, I see a lot of people running over to 2020.1, even when it was in beta phase, and they're like freaking out because it's broken, this and that, this and that. You don't have to use the latest version. Um, so I generally tend to stick to 20, the prior year version, until you hit 0.2 on the next one because usually everybody else has gone through all the the horror and misery and i get to skip all that so <laughs> i tend to stick with the older ones um um just in case okay so let it run do its thing da, 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 da. me personally i like the hdr pipeline better than the ur pipeline but that's just my personal choice i think there's just uh, there's more available inside the HDR pipeline than there is in the UR pipeline. And, and the UR pipeline is practically identical to the standard as far as look goes. And you can get a lot from the standard look. 
Um, it, exact. That's right, Dominic. I have that excuse. It worked on my stream. I don't understand why it doesn't work in 2020. Now, I, I just, yeah, it, like, here's a fine example. VR in 2019 versus 2020. Use 2019. Don't use 2020. <laughs> I, I can't tell you the amount of people who are like, the 29 to 2020 version is so broken on certain areas. It's just, it's, it's true. It's true. It can eat, horse can even wait till point three. I agree. You know, take your time. There's no reason to rush. All right, <clears throat> let's load this in. It's thinking. Um, and I don't know if my internet is slow or not. Um, do you realize that I got myself doing this, and I'm streaming, and I got two kids. On one on a computer, one on an iPad, also streaming. So it may chug a little bit. But so far, it says that the uh, um, the speed is excellent. So. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's do this. Come on, Unity. Keep pushing through. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay, and this is good because I got like a list of like 10 things I need to add. Yep, yep. Cursed Toast, you're correct. It's all about school right now. Kids got school. Okay, so now our HDR pipeline wizard comes in, and it says, can we fix this? Yes, click fix all. Sit back and let it go to town. Now, the plants are probably going to turn pink. Why do the plants turn pink? So what the pipeline wizard is doing is it is looking for everything that is labeled standard lit. And it's going to take standard lit and convert that to HDRP lit. The plants do not use the standard shader. The plants use um, uh, the nature shader. So that's why it turns pink. It's because it's an ink nature shader on itself is an incompatible shader to the HDR pipeline. But inside the hdr pipeline is a nature is there a nature i don't think there is a nature possibly i believe maybe we'll see but there is a shader in there um so we're gonna go ahead and create an hdr pipeline for this and we're gonna create everything else and it's gonna check mark all good all done yay Okay, so then I'm going to go to Edit, Render Pipeline, Upgrade Project Materials to Render High Definition Rendering High Definition Materials. Go ahead and proceed. Okay, I'm just going to sit back and let it do its thing. And see how many things break, but I think overall it should be just the, um, the plants that suffer. But we will see. <laughs> so let's knock this out. Oh. And these take just a little bit of time. Now the beauty is, is like all of our assets can be upgraded to the HDR pipeline. The difference is, is that there's, there's. There's certain textures that were built specifically for the HDR pipeline. So um, when you look at your textures, um, 
what they do is it actually cuts up certain textures into um, four different channels versus two. So your metallic roughness is two channels. It's your RGB value and your alpha. It grabs the metallic from your RGB, oh, zero to one, white to black, and it grabs your alpha channel, zero to one, and it combines the two textures together. With the layer mask, I believe it's the color, it's the layer mask or the color, it actually uh, com splits those into four different channels, RGBA. So uh, one is your diffuse, which is your color. The other is your ambient occlusion. The other is your height map. And the other is your, um, what's the last one? Uh, good Lord, I forgot what the last one is. But it splits that up. Ours, it still splits it up. It just, it's missing color information in two of the channel, which is the ambient occlusion and the height. So just, just a heads up. Okay, yes, so this is what we want. This is what uh, the standard HDRP looks like. So we talked about the plant, right? If we open up the plant, I can go to here. You see how it's using Nature Speed Tree 8. If I go to HDRP, I could change this. So I'm gonna just do a lit. Now, the blue, this, that, that, um, that is gone. But I need to reconnect now my plant. So I gotta go to plants. I think this is 06, and I go to my textures, and here are my textures. So, let's see. I got my base map, which is my albedo, and then I got my mask map, which is... I don't think it created one. So let's, let's actually have Unity create one. Um, where is this? This one right here. I'm going to set this one to um, standard. And I'm going to set my metallic smoothness. Now check this out. And I'm going to select that material. Edit. Render pipeline. Upgrade selected material to high definition pipeline. Boom. Okay. So it did the work for me. Okay. So that works um so the next thing i want to do is let's look at this room and what is completely wrong with it which is uh, this exposure is is awful awful all right so let's see where is it it here we go uh visual environment hdr sky Let's see. Uh, okay, so this one isn't even being used. There is. Let's see. Default sky. Is this one. Oof, this is so bad. Uh, let's see, where's the pipelines? We need to find, because right now there is a pipeline that is running. And it is ruining everything for us. So, let's see if we can find it. Is this it right here? No, I need a profile. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay, let's try to see if we can override it. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get my global volume. And I need to create a new rendering profile. Or HDR profile. Uh, these are essential. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to rendering and high definition, uh, either rendering asset profile, or I could just click here and say new. Um, and that's going to create my profile. So where are you? You're, you're right here. I'm going to 
me drop this in here. And this is going to be called um, room profile. And so that way I know exactly what this is. Um, and then in here, I want to, where did you go? Oh, uh, connect this again. Let's see if we can get some adjustments right here. Okay, so immediately we know that this profile um, will affect our scene. Now, this exposure right here, this HDRP, I want to get rid of this. Um, so let's see if we can add a sky. Um, and let's do a physically based sky. And I also want to add a sky. Where is this? Uh, lighting. No, there's post processing. Where's that damn thing? visual environment there it is so the visual environment okay <clears throat> right now it's set to none um, and I want it to be the physically based sky okay boom so what did I just do I um, basically I need to make sure this is correct because I still think this is wrong um, yes, this is still wrong, but it's better than nothing right now. Let's see, is that right? Ah, good. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Give me one sec, guys. Just got to get this all set up. Static. Exposure. Fixed. Mode. Okay, this is perfect. Okay. All right. So let me just kind of run through what I just did um, and kind of explain it. Okay. Your environment, when you load it in, has a couple of issues that are going to just destroy your lighting as a whole um, on HDR pipeline. The first thing that your environment will do pre- uh, this global volume, which looks like this, is it's going to assume that you're going to have an HDR environment that's the, the base environment in here. It's also going to assume it's going to adjust your exposure. And what I mean by adjust your exposure is you see how it goes from like dark here to light here based on where your camera is. That right there is going to ruin your day. It, it's just a default in here and, and it's so bad. It doesn't tell you exactly what light source you really want in here. And you want to be able to have control of that. And if you don't get control of that right at the beginning, it's just going to ruin everything. So what we do is we create a global volume. Your global volume is going to determine how your environment looks. And this is where your skybox goes. This is where your lighting information goes. Um, you don't use, like in URP, um, it, when you're in HDRP, uh, you don't drop in a skybox anymore. That doesn't exist. So you have to use the volume, your global volume, to create your skybox. So when you create your skybox, first you have to create a visual environment. You got to choose what type of visual environment you want. You can either choose none, and so your entire scene is not illuminated by anything, or you can do a gradient sky which now your scene is illuminated by a gradient. And you can define your gradient by going to like override sky and choosing a gradient sky. And you can define your gradient from there. Or you could choose an HDRI sky and whew, that's really hot right there. Or you can choose this new physically based sky. Now this new physically based sky is pretty fun. Um, it, it's got a lot of controls. Uh, you can adjust like what time of day it is. Um, and I believe it is directly associated with this um, light source. So, you know, you can you can use that to your um, uh, to, to what you want to do. And then you can go into the physically based sky and, and you could start adjusting a whole bunch of things like uh, the the air density. Um, Let's see, I know I've messed with this before. 
I've made it like go from like daytime to nighttime with this before. <laughs> um, but uh, where are you, light source? I'm gonna get you closer into my room. Let's see. Do, 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 do. So there's a bunch of things we can do with this thing. I don't know if I'm going to use this because this looks like poo so far and it's not really an outdoor environment. So I'm going to remove the physically based and if we do an HDR sky, do I want to do an HDR sky? Let's just do a gradient sky. I think this will be better. Um, and I'm going to do a light source, which is our sky, and I'm going to do my gradient sky. This should, in, in practice, change my color, which it does. So, you know, the sky and elements are adjusting things. Um, but what's also nice is you can adjust the exposure as to how much everything is adjusted <clears throat> by the light source. Um, so, right here, I know that I'm going to have a light source, a directional light, pushing into my, um, my room through here. This is where the light source is going to come in. It's going to bounce everywhere inside of here. <clears throat> now, um, this looks awful because the idea of the light bouncing is not going to occur yet because we actually are not bouncing it off of anything that's static. And that's the only time that this works is when it bounces off of static objects. So real quickly, let's go ahead and define a couple things. Window, rendering, light settings. In here, what I want to do is I want to set this to GPU. I always want to set it to GPU because I have a beast of a GPU. And um, the next thing I want to do is I wanted to define the areas that I want to be static. Now, here's the best way I can tell you how to define that. You want big surfaces. Big surfaces will splash their light up onto other surfaces. So the floors are a great one to start with. So I'm going to turn this on and that's going to bounce light up. And because I didn't just hit everything, it's going to go quickly. I want my ceilings to bounce light. So I'm going to set this to static. Yes, let's go ahead and set those to static. And let me see, that's set to directional. Okay. And you can see that the bake times go pretty quickly and the ceiling started kind of getting a little bit lighter. The walls, I like these to be static. So I'm going to hit that. And you can see what areas are being affected by this like slow adjustment change of the light entering the room. Um, and as I change the directional light source, let's say to here, it's going to take some time to bake and it's going to adjust everything inside the room. Um, also, I can adjust the multiplier. So, you know, let's say I want this light, which this is incorrect right here. And, and this is something to point out. Um, if you started a brand new, actually, I can show it to you here. Uh, if I do light, directional light, um, is that the same? No. Um, some lights are incredibly brighter um, than their lux value. Um, so that one, this one is, is, is a lot lower in value, whereas usually um, you'll be at, I don't know, like uh, 600, is that 600 lumens or lux? I can't tell. Um, but uh, these, I know these light numbers are different, especially with point lights and things like that. You'll, you'll see that that occurs. The other thing I want to point out is, um, so let's set this at uh, 
let's say three, because I don't want to wash out the scene, but I want more bounce on my environment. I can take this and increase my indirect multiplier. So let's say let's uh, five. And you'll see that the bounce from the light is far greater now onto the walls, the ceilings, the floor, etc., etc. Um, and it just really depends on the angle at which light is entering your room that changes the way the light source will behave. Okay. Um, and we can also adjust the shadows. So if you click on the shadow tab, there are, so this is the standard shadow and, and, you know, you could adjust the resolution. You can go like ultra high and you can see how it gets really crisp right there. Um, high, medium, uh, sort of thing. Um, you, there's also another little like tool chest kind of thing um, that you could drop down here and it will open up another subcategory inside here that will allow you to adjust even more. Um, I'm going to click on these ceilings. Uh, let's see, because I want to adjust this material. I think that the metallicness is too strong, so I'm going to really dial that back a bit. Um, so that it's not nearly as intense. Uh, but so then once this is done, I think we're going to need to add more light sources into our environment. Um, this one light source is, is clearly not bouncing enough light. And I think how many bounces am I getting? Let's look at our... Let's see. I want to see where the bounces are. I don't see it anywhere real quick. But um, it may be fixed when we get to our um, light probes. Let's see. Um here, can I can I do this with you once I'm done, son? It shouldn't be too much longer, okay? Uh, I I'm going to make lunch for you guys in thirty minutes, so you guys can play around with each other. You maybe do some technology, okay? okay? Is Evan done too? What is? Oh, say what? Okay, as soon as Evan is done with the meeting, you two can have a little bit of technology time, okay? Until lunch. Okay? All right. Um, okay. So, um, sorry about that. So, all right, we did that. Now let's, let's talk about um, our... Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I need to do some light probes um, to get this room filled in. But also, yeah, I think we're going to probably want to add maybe another light in here. So we can do maybe a point light. This point light, let's bring this up above. And we'll make this where the fan is. Bring it down a bit. Okay, so here's like the, the real intensity. So 200, um, you could turn on the shadows. You can enable volumetrics or not. I generally tend to disable volumetrics um, for these lights. And this, we could also adjust the shadow intensity um, on our tint. So let's see. I don't think I can do that, but I can do something like this. So, uh, five, no. Do 15. So this will light this environment right here. And I want to make sure that this is all set to static. That's good. And this point light. I want to go to the shadow map and we can adjust the shadow intensity in here as well. Okay. 
and usually light like this is not pure white it's got a tint so we'll, we'll give it a slight tint as well and this will kind of help fill in uh, some of the issue areas that we have but these objects are all set to dynamic lighting so what we need to do is we need to add in light probes um, so that we can start getting a full visual effect of what's happening um, and we also need to add in reflection probes and then we can start really tweaking things so let's go ahead and add in a light probe group now um, why are light probes good light probes are great because you notice how we only set um, light up with the and here's a little trick if you can drop down this thing you can decrease these 3d icon sizes because sometimes they just get ridiculous um, light probes are great for dynamic objects so you know uh, your your toasters your your fridges your things in your scene that you may not want to be set to static and, and we're gonna play around with this um, you could set to dynamic so once you have a light probe in here if you click this button um, you could start moving around um, your light probes and building sort of like this light probe mesh. And what it's going to do is instead of baking your dynamic objects, it's going to illuminate your dynamic objects based on the, um, the light source that it gathers from the GI being illuminated from your baking. I know that sounds really uh, sounds like a lot, but it'll make more sense in a second. So I like doing these grids. These grids are easy and simple and a fast way to generate light probe sources. And it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Unity can figure it out and I can take you know some of these things move these around uh, and let's see I could take this uh, if you go to the right there and you could take these and duplicate these down the hallway Okay, and I'm just going to leave that there for right now. Okay, so these light probes are going to take light information and it's going to take the, the, the static bake and, and push that over. Now, I notice that this right here is happening. This happens a lot, and this is when you know Unity has crashed. So go ahead and close it. You see how I just hit the close button and it didn't do anything. This is when I know Unity is conked out. Um, so I'm going to go to my Unity editor and the task. And then I'm going to reopen my scene. This happens a lot, especially when you start building lots of environmental assets that require baking. If you want to reduce the amount of trouble that occurs with that the best way to do it is to make sure that um, you consistently um, uh, try not to bake all these static objects so let's test this out I'm going to turn off gizmos and so you you see how some things in this room that are set to static or dynamic are now being illuminated um, not that well though so let's do oops 50 oh this is real time we need to set this to mixed and directional light we also want to be set to mixed as well so let's see how quickly this bait goes and then I could test out this light probe so you can see how it, it's affected a couple of the things in here. Let's go ahead and also add in our rendering light reflection probe. 
I'm going to turn on my gizmo, and I'm going to set my blend distance to like 0.5. And I'm going to go to a top view, and I'm going to, I think there's this like little button right here. Yay. I'm going to create a box around my environment. And you can actually create multiple boxes if you want. So if you wanted this probe right there and this probe right here, um, and then a, a third probe, let's say right here, specifically for this hallway, you can. And what this is going to do is it's going to take a projection of this environment and it's going to um, basically set it up so that um, it looks, uh, oh boy, these things are way too big. Um, let's see, can I just do, let's see, four. Okay, there we go. You can kind of see how the light probe works. So, <clears throat> getting up close and personal with this, you notice what it is currently reflecting. It's only reflecting the baked objects, right? Real time, it's going to reflect real time, but that's more processing power um, on, on our end. So, I'm just going to keep this as a, a baked object. And we could see that if we take the probes and turn it on and off, you could see the metallic surfaces change significantly. And with these light probes, we could change the environments over there and, and do some quick adjustments and that environment changes quickly. So let's see, now <clears throat> the beauty is, um, let's see, uh, and I just wanna, kind of read through things real quick change the shadow orientation if you rotate it ceiling should cast shadows this always bothers me da, 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 da. let's see um, all right so now that we're in here I want to adjust the now I get to play with this so point light so we got our two lights right here we got one and then the other. Now I want to play with this directional light. And what I also want to look at is these tiles up here, these ceilings. I'm curious. If I turn the static off, does that look better? Kind of does. Let's see what happens when it finishes baking out. Uh, let's see. Now, are these things tiled on top of each other? Nope. So, the reason why it is doing that... If I change the children again... It got really dark all of a sudden. I think the shadows from this HDRP is, is really dark. And I'm trying to pinpoint what is causing the ceiling to get so dark. Um, so let's take a look. If I go to global volume, let's go to our light. Our ceiling. Uh, let's see if this material, we can adjust this individually. Alright. So, do, 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 do. this says it is casting shadows. If I turn that off, now my ceiling is no longer casting shadows, which has definitely lightened it up a little bit. Um, should this contribute GI? Let's see. Um, yes, it should. And let's see, it's set to white. What else can we do to pull out this? Because right now it is too darn dark. Yes, okay. Um, 
go ahead and have a little bit of technology time, okay? And then I'll make lunch in 25 minutes. Is is? Yeah. I'm so excited. I can't. I'm like riveted right now. These kids are so freaking funny. It's hysterical. Um. <laughs> oh man. I I, I uh, yeah. My boys are just so incredibly entertaining. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's let's see if I can bump up maybe the indirect multiplier. Okay, this is starting to look a little bit better. I do think that the shadows are a little... It's a, it's a little dark in, in all truthfulness. Um, and I don't know what we could do other than adding an additional light source, maybe in the hallway. But then let's play with post-processing for a little bit. I, <laughs> so my, my youngest son, he is so funny because he's just like, Dad, guess what? And he goes on and on and on and on. And you're just like, really? 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 Wow. That's great, son. And it's just he'll just he'll talk for, for 45 minutes about what he's really excited about. And he'll let you know. And and you just you, you do your best to just say that's this great song. I, I'm so proud to hear this, you know, and just kind of go along with it. Um, so <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. Um, this right here. Okay, so this is a fine example of what I don't like. Is you see how dark this is? This shouldn't be dark. So let's take a look at this and see why is it dark. Does it need to cast a shadow? Yes. It should contribute to GI, even when it does have um, GI. So basically, what it seems like is it's coming in, but it's not bouncing. So let's test something out. Let's try adjusting this to three. Let's see if we can get some more bounces in here. Yeah, mm, not a huge difference. I think what it will end up being is it really needs another light source on this side to kind of fill in this gap, which I'm curious what we would, if we were to have, let's say, a, uh, a, a ceiling light over here and we had it illuminate this scene, would it make it look better? So, you know, let's give it a test. Um... That's the beauty also with just setting certain things static and leaving your dynamic objects non-static is that it really does allow you to um, uh, have the freedom to um, adjust the lighting. And you're, you notice how we're just grinding through this. We, we don't have to sit there for half an hour um, trying to get this working we can we can do this really quick so i i found i just had some ah here we go these are office lights um these would probably be a good one to add in so we're just going to add that in real quick and let's see i'm going to read while we're doing this i have awesome kids hell yeah i do um Let's see. Uh, Dominic says, so what is the purpose of moving it around if it is even there? Um, I will. Oh, uh, that was answered. Da, 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 da. It's high def ones. Unios has lightweight prior to these new terms. Oh, okay, so we're just doing kind of like a, a basic explanation. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these. Let's let's go ahead and grab some office lights. I'm going to use... Oh, and you notice these are pink right here. So if they're pink, edit, render pipeline, upgrade, selected, done. 
All right, so that's done. Um, I can take, we have these spotlights, right? So we can grab one of those. And these are more, um, what do they call them? Uh, recess lighting, right? Um, so, you know, we could add some recess lighting. Um, I think I'm going to do this lighting, though. Let's go ahead and go ahead and grab that. Move that over here. Press F. Um, it probably makes more sense getting it above between the panels than it is um, having it sit over a panel, so to speak. And I believe if we hit this as static, it will set the emission channel on here. So if our glass has an emission, which I believe it does, yep, right here, um, we can increase the intensity and it will increase the uh, illumination in this area as well. If we wanted just the object itself to uh, in add a light source in here. Um, if we didn't want that, we could also create a light source in this area. So we can even take, you know, let's say um, this, this point light over here, duplicate it and uh, you know move it down to this area to illuminate this section and you know it doesn't have to be that bright it could be you know, um, you know 20 or 30 or something like that um, another cool trick is there is a radius right here so if you adjust the radius it kind of uh, it, it changes it from such like a ball of light to it kind of expands it out a little bit and kind of really just allows the light to spread a little more evenly throughout this room, um, which, you know, it, it's kind of nice. Um, then what I also want to do is in our light settings, we can hop on into here. And uh, what was I looking for? Oh, um, you could do certain things in here. Like you can, I believe, just turn on ambient occlusion and you can get some ambient occlusion built in uh, to your environment. Um, we could also add in some light rays, which will do with some fog and uh, add in some extra uh, little, little fluffs and features. And in order to do that, what you want to use is another global volume. So I, I'm going to call this my sky volume. Um, reason why I call this sky volume is this this whole area has everything to do with the overall um, sky uh, um, environment and the then I can do post-processing, which is kind of the overall uh, look inside the room minus the, uh, the affecting the sky. So you can actually have two separate ones and they won't mess with each other. So uh, if you do rendering, no, uh, lighting, 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 no, uh, volume, we can do another volume and we'll call this um, post volume and I'm going to create it as new and it's going to drop it right in here into my sample scene. Um, this is where we will probably run into the bug that I was talking about earlier but this is also where we can um, uh, really start tweaking things as well. So I got my sky volume, I got my post volume. Um, let me just adjust my directional light. And let me get my two point lights and adjust their shadows just a little bit. Um, this isn't an exact science. You're going to have to tweak it a little bit here and there just to get it perfect. Um, so with the post volume, this is where you can add some pretty cool stuff um, to really enhance your environment. 
Um, so what could we start with? We could start with, uh, I don't think material, but post-processing. We've got, oh, so many things to use here. And, and this is the difference between URP. URP, you only get this. Um, HDRP, you get all this other stuff. So uh, let's see, lighting, there's ambient occlusion that we can do. And if you hit the all button, um, you can immediately see that uh, things started happening. Uh, you can adjust the intensity um, immediately, uh, the direction strength, the radius, all that other stuff. Um, of course, you're going to want to uh, fidget around with this, but you know, if I if I max this out, you can see the the changes in the environment. Um, but I'm going to leave that kind of where it is. The we got screen space reflections. I'm okay with the reflections right now. I don't think we really need to mess with that. Um, we do need to add some bloom. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to all. And we can adjust the threshold and the intensity. So I'm going to put the intensity up. And you can adjust the threshold. And as we add more emissive channels um, into this area, you'll, you'll definitely see it more. I think we should be able to see it more on this light source right here. This one um, has a ceiling fan, and inside of it, uh, oh, there is there an emission channel? No. Let's see. So we'd have to add an emission channel to that to really make it work. Um, let's see. Then there is the. Uh, ch -ch 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 Where's this post volume? And sorry, guys, I'm, I, I gotta feed my boys in like eight minutes, so I gotta make sure I, I push through, make this work. Um, we have color adjustments. I believe this is gonna glitch out, but I'll double check. If this is correct, this should move all the way to the top left. No, it doesn't. Oh, perfect. So we could adjust our lift gamma gain, so you could adjust your, your light sources. So uh, the way I, I look at lift gamma gain is, is basically your, your low lights, your highlights, and your shadows. So basically from left to right. Um, we would want to add in some... Um, and I got the exposure really blown out right here because I want to add in some uh, light rays to come into here. So how do we add in some light rays? Uh, we want to, in our post volume, turn on fog. So we'll go ahead and enable this. And inside of fog, there's actually a little gear. And this will add some more... Um, the assistance so we want to turn on volumetric fog and this gives us like filters and slice distributions and stuff like that um, which is is incredibly important so for our light rays that we're going to want I can go create a volume and is this yeah I want to create a box volume that's what I want to create I'm gonna call this fog and this volume Am I correct? Hold on. Let me make sure. Da, 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 volume. I think this is it. Visual effect. Effects. Lights. Yes, I believe this is correct. Um, yes, yes, this is. Uh, I'm going to create a new one called Fog. And I'm going to add a Fog Override. And I'll enable this as volumetric. And this one I'm going to create like this and oh gosh did I do this correctly double check I think I did but we'll find out in just a second okay so let me undo this in my light, I need a light that actually projects fog. Does my thing project fog? Yeah, so here's the volumetric effect, right? 
if I turn this fog on and I hide that gizmo, this one I should be able to see more. If it's not, then I did it wrong. Uh, da, 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 I think I did that wrong. Let's see. Well, I'll keep that there still. Post volume. Do, 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 do. My point light. Oh, I, I think I know what I did. Ah, so stupid. I forgot. Okay. No, I, I did this. I did it wrong, but I'll show you how to fix this. Um, I'm going to hide this fog volume. Uh, post processing. Where did I did? Oh, uh, my directional light. I need to bring down my volumetrics, right? And what I want to do, and this is like a kind of a cool little trick, is I'm going to create um, in my light settings. No, oh, not my light settings. In my HDRP settings. So you have your resources. This is your HDRP asset setting. So this is specific to your um, own particular project right now. And inside of here, you have different things you could do. Like you could turn on volumetrics or, or high, high, high quality volumetrics, or you can turn on screen space reflections and compress the reflections, or you could adjust so many things on here. One of the things that I like to do is enable light layers, okay? And it did that weird little thing and it went away. So what does enable light layers do? Um, if you go to your point light, now if you click this little button right here, there's a light layer button right here underneath it. So I'm going to create a light that is a, is it an area light? I think it's an area light. I think so. OK, so I'm going to create an area light. I'm going to turn on my gizmos so I could see. OK, there's my light right there. Or is it actually a point light? It may be a point light. 3D light, point light, but I want it parallel is what I want. Is that it? Point, area, rectangle. think oh gosh I'm gonna lose my mind here point let me see my radius I want the cone not the point light I want the spotlight that's what it is uh oh, there we go okay <laughs> sorry about that okay so many damn lights um so here's our light right now and you can see that it's bouncing off the floor and this is just a spotlight in real time now you can adjust the multiplier so that it has more of a fog effect right and we could take this and move this let's say um, right here in this window so I can adjust um, the size x y and you know it shines through now you need to use shadow maps to enable it otherwise it's it's going to um, um, always kind of beam through and this thing is really intense so we could take this down to you know say a hundred and adjust the um, uh, the multiplier or whatnot so that you know you get the perfect uh, fog range and you know you take these two you drop both of them one here and one here you know now you got your your volumetric lights and this is where you can um, you know adjust the values so they're not so incredibly powerful or intense now, if you did not want to have these lights affect your scene, here's a cool trick. You, let's say you just wanted the volumetric element, but you don't want all the lighting. You can go here and say, I don't want this on anything. 
And now, what did that do? Well, it got rid of those massive light layers, but now you could just say, all right, well, I want to still have the volumetric light come in though. And so I could still cast those light rays without actually um, having the lights affect the scene. Now, unfortunately, I think in, in our situation, um, I think having it turned on um, looked better. So let's go ahead and turn these back on. And uh, real-time lights. Let's see everything. And then we'll set these to like 15. So they're, they're not super intense. They're just, you know, good enough. And then um, once you've done that and, and you've, you've played around with your lighting enough, um, go to your post volume. We can add a couple more effects, but one of the really nice effects is depth of field. Um, so for this particular camera, uh, we want that depth of field. <clears throat> you know, we, we could do a real quick vignette though. Um, it's not called vignette. It's not called vignette. It's vignette. <laughs> I've heard all types of pronunciations about it. Um, so uh, depth of field is really nice. If you click on that, <clears throat> I usually use manual. And inside manual, I'll set like the start to two on the near blur and then the far blur is is another value. So where can I see this? You actually have to see this inside your main camera. So if I got to press uh, control F and if I go to my game mode, you'll see that this is blurring over there. Um, <clears throat> so I can adjust the uh, the camera type right now. This is a very much a wide lens. Usually you want it a uh, little uh, more shallower depth of field. So it, you want it probably like in the 40 range and stuff like that. We do want anti-aliasing to kind of clean up things um, so that the edges aren't nearly as jagged. And, and the post-processing, uh, if we start, let's say, at 40, the uh, and then 15... Yeah, let's let's adjust this All right. so you could see where the depth of field is starting to occur. You know, you could play around with these values until um, you're really happy. But you know, the idea is, you know, we can get a nice looking environmental composition and create a nice looking scene inside this area. Um, uh, relatively, relatively quickly. And uh, if I want to, let me do the post volume. I could spread this to, let's say, 80, and it will bring down that depth of field. But, um, yeah, and this is where we kind of get the, the idea for um, how to, let's see. Uh, I don't know why this is so off color I mean that's not good looking at all I think I need to change that shader so let me press F oh yeah definitely needs to change the shader I think this is transparent without alpha clipping am I wrong opaque Uh, Double-sided, definitely. Uh, standard, mirror, specular, displacement. This one should have an alpha channel. Oh, this one doesn't have an alpha channel. Okay, I'll need to fix that, because that is wrong. Okay. Plant six. Um, okay, but 
So I still got to fix that plan. But if I were to do an apartment, just real quick, and I still want to get into doing the bedroom, and I want to get into doing a bathroom, so I may save those for next week. Um, this is kind of how I would go about it. And here, once you get to this point, it's all about tweaking. It's all about, you know, how do I bring certain elements up, make them brighter, um, you know, I would like to spend probably more time on these paintings right here. These paintings don't look very good. So if I set these to static, would it look better or would it not? Do I need to adjust the metallic elements on these frames? Uh, maybe they're just too darn shiny, you know? Um, so, you know, let's let's do a remap of this. Let, let's bring the metallicness down a little bit. Um, yeah, ad adjusting these slightly so that... Um, they're not nearly see like that looks a lot better right now um, as intense as they were prior so it's, it's going through and adjusting and individually altering things um, let's see another thing that I see that could possibly help is in my directional light I see a uh, I'm wondering if there's the clip uh, I don't see it but usually in like point lights, you get this uh, little uh, near clipping and that could fix things as well because I just kind of see it right here, which I don't like. Okay, guys. So that's, I think, a good stopping point because I got to feed the boys. Um, I hope this was valuable and you guys learned something. Um, and I'm also going to probably finish this up a little bit more and play around with it and tweak it because I like having these environments for the uh, uh, discovering file base and uh, you know kind of fill it in a little bit but yes so I hope this helps you guys a little bit I hope you understand a little bit more about um, uh, the the reflection probes and the light probes and things like that and, and why these are important and how they can really help your scene um, I do believe even in the light probes, you can adjust the multipliers as well. So, you know, if you want your reflections to be brighter or darker, um, you can adjust these manually, which is kind of nice. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot to, to play with here. And, and, and I think the HDRP is a great pipeline. It gives you a lot of freedom to do what you want. And uh, that, that, I think that's like the best tool that anybody can give you. Um, so I hope that works for you guys. Um, and also it's really nice to be able to to adjust these smoothness sliders and stuff like that inside of unity versus having to go through and actually adjust them inside of um, um, uh, what you call it uh, your, your 3d program so um, it really helps make this stuff a lot easier and a lot better looking just with a couple tweaks of this the buttons and stuff like that Whew. All right, guys. Well, that's enough for me. I'm kind of worn out. I'm kind of bushled, but I hope this was good for you. Um, and if you have any other questions, I'm on Discord. Just shoot me a line. But I hope this wasn't too complicated. Uh, some people do run into issues with rendering, and it, and it can be a challenge. If this doesn't answer your questions, um, you know, shoot me a line or uh, just check out our courses, guys. I mean, we have a whole course dedicated to the HDR pipeline. Uh, that will help explain it a lot and uh, you know hopefully it'll give you a, uh, it, it gives you a good a couple ideas um, let's see uh, real quick operation gamma says one thing that throws me off in the scene is the paneling ceiling light in the kitchen in the shadows it doesn't eliminate uh, let's see it may just be the range so it's either the range or the intensity. I got the intensity really low. If I were to jack this up more, I think it would probably do a lot more into this area because now it kind of looks more like a kitchen light that's just turned on. It's <laughs> Kitchen lights are extremely bright. Um, and then, you know, we could adjust the shadows and stuff like that. But this is lighting, too. I mean, lighting takes time. It's not a quick... Um, plop it in and 30 seconds later you're finished you, you do want to spend time with lighting and and it could it could spend 
but you could spend a whole day just tweaking calculations and values, which is why I always encourage you, minimize the amount of static, maximize the amount of dynamic with the light probes. If you can do those two things, guys, your bake times are going to go extremely fast. You know, you can adjust lights almost in real time and not have to worry about um, um, the, the problems that are associated with uh, uh, real time rendering. All right, guys, this was good. I had fun. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, have a great week and uh, I'll put out a notification for the next time we got uh, get up, hop, uh, hop on up and, and we're running again. And, uh, you know, just kind of go from there. Um, so I will, I will definitely catch you guys later. Uh, this was Al, and uh, I will uh, see you soon. Bye.